Do you ever have those times where you kind of just stop for a moment and ask yourself, what am I even doing? What am I doing with my life? And you know, you're kind of sad for around 30 minutes, but then you bury that question underneath all of the work that you have to do and just resume what you were originally doing. Well, I did this for a really long time all throughout my high school and it eventually caught up to me. Last year, uh, during the summer, I had a complete breakdown to my friend and I kind of forced myself to actually grapple with this question. What is my life's purpose? What do I want to do? And it was really difficult to go through this process of self-discovery, but I'm so glad I did it. And here's kind of me walking you through how it played out. I think it's a pretty typical problem given our education system that people don't really have passions in high school. The classes that they take are pretty limited and very general, don't actually dive deep into specific interest areas. It's hard to know what your true passions and interests are when you know, you're really just trying to get a five on an AP exam. The thing though, is that people automatically jump to career and they try to undergo the process of discovering what career they wanna do way too quickly. Instead, it takes entire years of reflection to actually figure out what you want to do. There's a lot of trial and error, and I'm still undergoing the process. But I think one thing that I've really understood now is an understanding of myself and um, accepting all my flaws, uh, as well as my strengths, my passions, and my interests. And it's really about diving deep into knowing who you truly are. So there are three questions that guide this process. The first, arguably the most difficult, is understanding who you are currently. The second question is understanding how did you come this way? And then the third, which is also you know a continuous process, so I don't have a definitive answer, is what now? How does this actually apply to my life? So understanding yourself is a bit broad. It's about knowing what your strengths and your weaknesses are, how you perceive yourself, how others perceive you, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, there's a few ways you can go about doing this. I've kind of split it up in terms of first is quizzes and, you know, the, that your general personality and your strengths. The second is knowing what your interests are. The third is knowing what your values are. And then fourth is kind of connecting that all together in seeing how that applies practically. And I think I'll cover this in another video just because it is quite a difficult process. So in terms of understanding who you are, there are a lot of online quizzes like your Enneagrams, personality quizzes, MBTIs, etc. that can kind of speak and give some guidance as a very baseline before you go about doing it completely on your own. And I really like these, you know, as a baseline. They don't completely say everything about you, but they can help you identify some of your strengths and maybe identify some commonalities with other people or celebrity figures that you can kind of relate to. Uh, so the first one that I particularly like is the Myers-Briggs. So this is a four letter acronym. The first is E or I, so extroverted or introverted. The second is intuition or sensing. The third is feeling or thinking. And then the fourth is perceiving and judging. And I personally am an INTJ and I am a competitive person. I'm really analytical. I'm someone who desires efficiency and I understand and recognize that I am competent and I expect other people to be so as well. So that is one weakness that I do have. And this is actually really helpful in terms of practical, like jobs and resumes, because you can identify what your strengths are and then also your weaknesses. So you can talk about that in job interviews. Um, again, I'll go. I'll cover this later in more practical applications. The second personality quiz that I really like is the Enneagram test. So there are nine types, and uh, so Truity.com says that they each have their own motivations, fears, and internal dynamics. And while I don't understand what the other types are, I know myself that I am a Type One Wing Two, and. Uh, the type one is the perfectionist. I have high standards, I'm a stickler for rules, and I pay close attention to detail. The third quiz that I really like that I recently discovered is called the Sparkotype, and this is about what drives you and what gives you flow. So there are 10 types of Sparkotypes. So you have a primary, a shadow, and then an anti-Sparkotype. My primary is the sage where I am driven by um, teaching. So I really love to teach others. My, sh my secondary or my shadow is the maven, which means I like to learn 
and I learn in order for me to teach. My anti-sparkotype is performing, so I'm not so good at trying to bring joy to every interaction, or that takes the most energy out of me. Uh, and I definitely think this is true as well. It's not necessarily force you into a box or put you into a career, it just helps you understand why you do things. And you can kind of align any sort of job or responsibility to those uh, frameworks. So next is understanding what your interests are. And not only what your interests are, but why you're interested in the first place. Because I often ask people, you know, like, what are you interested in? And they'll say something broad, like, I'm interested in technology. But you can kind of tell that they don't actually know what they're interested in, because if you push a little bit further, their interest breaks down. They can't identify what specifically makes them interested in technology. Is it that there's a lot of ways innovation can improve our livelihoods? You know, technology is uh, changing the way that humans socialize. There's a lot of questions that, uh, are very specific that they perhaps are not able to identify. So a few ways to approach this is asking yourself like what consumes most of your time and if you don't necessarily have a lot of interest or hobbies perhaps you aren't really doing that many things and you want to sort of discover what you actually are interested in. So this requires auditing almost all aspects of your life from the media that you consume. So what books are you reading? What podcasts are you listening to? What shows are you watching? To what classes are you taking? Uh, what speaks most to you? Like in those media forms, what is it that makes you continue to listen, continue to watch, continue to engage? So last year I was broadly interested in technology in China and Again, I didn't necessarily know why though. So what I did was I really went down a bunch of rabbit holes and I found that the topics that I could go under rabbit holes for were the topics that I were actually interested in. If there was some sort of subject area that I thought I was interested in, but I researched for maybe one or two hours and then I just gave up, I knew I really wasn't that interested in it. So for instance, uh, Shanjai, which is a specific type of copycat technology in China, I could go about this for hours. I pored over scholarly journal articles, I read books about them, I even talked to my parents about it to understand their perspective. I revisited my own vacations back in Shenzhen and my encounters with this type of technology and I got so invested that I wrote like a 4,000 word essay about it. Clearly I do have an interest in that and it doesn't necessarily connect with a lot of my classes but that is where you know you step in. You do need to make those connections yourself to make something you know just a vague interest into a very specific one that you can uh, apply to your own life and know how to pursue further as opposed to kind of just be passive about it. I've actually found that classes and internships are not necessarily the best way to explore interests uh, if you do not already know what your interests are in the first place. I'm interested in sustainability and one of the reasons why I'm interested in it is because last year I went through the Pacific Northwest heat wave and I realized how our city's infrastructure is not prepared for us to deal with horrendous weather events. Uh, then it's how are you going to approach that interest? How are you going to explore it further? Uh, I personally love to listen to podcasts, I love to read books, but most importantly, I like to write and to teach others. So I pursued that topic in my international affairs newspaper class, and I also learned about it in my environmental economics class. You need to know also how to channel that interest as well. The third part of knowing who you are is understanding what your values are. The so values is what allows you to connect your interests to what you want to do in life in order to give it purpose. There's also a lot of techniques in order to figure out what your values are. So one of these is the gravestone technique. Um, the first question under this technique is literally what is written on your gravestone? So for me, I would want it to say lifelong learner, creator, artist, and educator. The second is what would different people say about you at your funeral? And then I have that I would want my friends to say that I'm loyal, that I offer good advice, I'm a good conversationalist, and I keep them in check. I'd want my family to say that I show up when um, they expect it, that I'm liable. I want my workplace to say I'm efficient and hardworking and I love having ideas. And I want random people to say that I'm inspirational, life changing, and I make them think about the world differently. So if you think about it, it does connect to a lot of my personality traits. Uh, my desire for efficiency, my desire to teach other people, and my overall 
uh, continuous journey to learn. And then the third question is, what's on your Wikipedia page? For me, I wrote, I created a system or a technology or an organization or a guidebook that has increased equitable access to well-being. Uh, and then from there, I transformed it into a sort of question for life that I want to answer. And it's all right if this question changes, but currently it is, how can we leverage technology and law to maximize well-being in an equitable and sustainable fashion? And it kind of comes full circle because once you identify the question, you can then narrow down your interest areas and do more research in order to answer that question and continue to refine that question as well. And then finally, to kind of synthesize everything together, because right now you have a lot of data points, you know, you have your strengths, you have your interests, you have your values. How can you make understanding of what this is? I kind of wrote an about me page. This is a little bit narcissistic, but you don't even have to publish it. I do, however, think it's helpful to just write everything down so you can refer back to it and you can then refine it later. Once it changes, you can also track how your interests and your values have changed over time. And so essentially this has a sort of tell me about yourself short bio, and then it has my life question in it. And then it also has a motto. So my motto is I'm a lifelong learner and thinker. I create and educate to appreciate and inspire. I honestly don't think that this motto will change. However, it might change in the ways that it manifests. Um, so I then break down what exactly do each of those words mean? What does it mean to be a lifelong learner and thinker? Uh, and what does it mean to create and to educate? And why do I do these? And then I also recorded some worldview changing novels, nonfiction books, short stories, creative nonfiction, and long reads that I've consumed because one way I do learn is through, you know, reading uh, and consuming media. So a last note is that change is completely okay. I looked back into my high school planner and my freshman year, I kind of answered this sort of tell me about yourself question. I said that I wanted to be an anesthesiologist, that I wanted to take biology and chem courses and do research over the summer with professors. Clearly that has changed because by the senior year of high school, I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, I was doing a lot of debate and social justice type of activities. My internship was at a legal clinic. It was entirely different. Um, and while I'm still more into the social sciences uh, and the more creative side, so I no longer want to go into medicine, I still have changed a lot from my senior year of high school because now I'm more interested in businesses uh, and less into actual policy practice. So essentially the process of self-discovery never really ends. But that does not mean that you cannot make it meaningful, intentional, and honestly really beautiful because it's been incredible to see how I've changed over time and to see my growth in my self-confidence. I've also found myself engaging in a lot more meaningful conversations with other people because first I understand a lot about my own passions so I can talk on and on about them. And then also because once I do understand myself more, I can then dedicate my attention to being more curious about the person that I'm talking to and asking really interesting questions. So ultimately, yes, the process of self-discovery is really challenging, difficult, and hard to begin. But once you do, it's incredibly rewarding. And I hope that this video helps and that we actually sit with these questions instead of just brushing them aside like we usually do. The next part of this series is all about stepping down memory lane and figuring out why you are the way that you are. So thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one. Juice and I found. Oh, are you